We are certainly spot for choice when it comes to web frameworks with Python. And even if you look outside of the top big four, I suppose there are plenty of options there for you to use to build your applications and APIs. So why am I interested in this one and why am I talking about it? Well, there are two main reasons. The first is that it is written in Rust. Now that comes with the benefits of other low level languages that gives us that performance boost that Python can be lacking in certain areas. But the second point is the one that's the most interesting to me. And that's the fact that there seems to be a growing trend in building Python libraries with Rust. I think this is to do with the booming popularity of Rust and the fact that people enjoy writing with it. Or I can see the benefits. And in fact, there's an up and coming data science library called Polars, which is showing to be gaining popularity and has that performance advantage over something like pandas. Now overthrowing pandas in that space is probably quite an undertaking, but I think that makes it even more interesting. Don't we already have this though with C libraries? Well, yes we do. In fact, my favorite HTML parser, a Selectolax, is built on top of Modest, which is a C library. And in fact, you can see how much faster it is already with that. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna have a quick look through the repo and then we're gonna write a short app or an API, and then we'll performance test it at the end just to see where we are at. So let's get started. So this is the website here, and we can see that this looks fairly standard, fairly straightforward. If you've written any kind of application in Python, this will look pretty handy and pretty normal to you. And we scroll down, we have some cool important keywords like async support, uh, simple API, and of course, blazingly fast, which I think just comes part and parcel with Rust these days. Also sponsored by DigitalOcean, which is pretty cool. So let's have a look at the actual source. And if you go, where is it down here? You can see that this is 45% Rust, this repo. And we look under the source code here. We've got all of this cool stuff here. Here's the server code all written in Rust. Now, as I said in the intro, that's quite interesting. And I hope things like this gain more popularity so more people are interested in expanding the Python and Rust relationship, just so we have loads more cool options of things to work with. So what I've done here is I've got a server running already. I copied out the basic example and you can see it's running here and I go back over here and we have this response here. Pretty cool, neat and all straightforward. So let's go to the documentation and this is where you're going to find one of the pitfalls on the downfalls of a new framework that is possibly maintained just by one person is the fact that a lot of the documentation is missing. But if you like this sort of thing and you like this framework, there is absolutely no reason why you couldn't contribute to some of this too. So what I wanna do is I want to build a real simple uh, API, which we're gonna give it some parameters and it's going to return that data in its response. And then we're gonna throw thousands and thousands of requests at it and see what happens. So let's have a look for that. So we wanna be under um, uh, features maybe. And I'm looking for, here we go, dynamic routes. So we'll do, that's a post one, but that should be fine. We can specify it like this. And then we could just return JSONify. We might need to import that in. Okay, so that's cool. Let's do that then. I'm gonna shut this server down. Okay, so let's change this to giving it a number. I think we did it like this. Let's give it an ID. And then we wanted to uh, put in, I believe the request param, so it was, where am I looking? Uh, request params ID. Okay, so let's just say our data is equal to request uh, params and then ID like this. So we should now be able to um, return out this, I think. If we go back here, let's just remove this stuff and we will return out uh, JSONify, which we might need to import. Yes, we have and create a dictionary and we'll just say, uh, data is going to be equal to the data we sent in. Right, let's run that, python main.py, server's running. Let's see if we give it something, we get it back. We do indeed, so there we are. We, whatever we put in here, uh, it could be anything, I think, uh, something like this maybe. We get it back like that, great. So this server is now running. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave this running, I'm gonna start up a new terminal, make this a bit bigger so you guys can see. And we're gonna be using a tool called Hey. Now Hey is basically going to spam this with requests uh, to the IP address that we give it. And I think ours is 5,000. And let's just put in 
this so in case you didn't realize i'm going to turn it down from 200,000 and we'll make it 10,000 to start with and let's see what we get back so we got our results uh, and we'll find you see 99 percent what happened in 0 0.006 seconds which is pretty quick now obviously this is just subjective this is over the local network and let's be honest the thing that's going to slow you down when you're doing stuff like this is your io your input output basically your database so this is all subjective what i'm going to do now is i'm going to close this out and we'll actually go and get a fast api one up okay so that's on 8000 and hopefully this does the same thing yes it does okay so i'm going to move this let's make this a bit smaller so we can see that let's create a new terminal underneath and we'll run hey again on port 8000 you can see all the requests coming through on my fast api and here's the response the results so look at the difference in the histograms again this is this test is totally subjective and doesn't mean a whole lot but if you look the fact that these ones were 99% up right here and this one is a bit further lower down distribution was 99% in 0 0.02 seconds 19% in 0 0.006 so this has got potential I think now I know this is all subjective but I do find it quite interesting that these sort of options are becoming available to us and I think it's good and we should show support to people like the creator of this framework so they can continue to grow and give us that extra option for when we are building niche or a niche APIs or web or web apps within Python. If you've enjoyed this video, I think you're going to enjoy this one here too, where we talk about more API stuff in Python.